Okay, now that we're at the light board, let's take a deeper look into exactly what Veeam Cloud Connect provides our customers. The first thing to remember is the best practice strategy for data protection, the 3-2-1 rule. That means three copies of your data, production does count as one of those, two different media types with one being off-site. Now when we look at the offering that Cloud Connect provides, not only can we help you achieve the one in the 3-2-1 being off-site, but we can arguably also help achieve a different media type as well because many of the service providers offer tape out as a service. Now what does Cloud Connect actually do? So if we look at this side of the light board with the customer environment depicted, we've got a basic virtualized environment with production storage, we've got a host, and we also have a Veeam repository. So if you have backup and replication deployed, if you also have the agents deployed perhaps, protecting physical workloads, and you've got all your backups located on your on-site Veeam repository, if you were to have another location, a DR site, another data center with another disk-based storage target that you could back up to, you could simply create a backup copy job with or without WAN acceleration to go to the remote location. But what if you're looking for a remote location that you don't have to manage and you'd like to be able to scale simply by making a phone call? That's where our Veeam Cloud and Service Provider ecosystem comes in, also referred to as VCSP. So if you look on this side of the board, similar environment, but this is depicting the actual service provider's data center. Now, if we look at the customer location, let's say that you've got a few backups that you want to send to cloud storage inside one of our service provider's data centers. Now, historically, if you needed to back up to a remote location, you'd have to worry about networking, MPLS, VPN tunnels, whatever the case may be. There's no networking complexities. One of the really nice things around Veeam Cloud Connect is we simply establish a connection with the service provider's data center over a single port via SSL. Now, once this connection is established, the data flow will leave the on-site repository via this single port, establish the SSL connection with the VCSP. Now, on the provider side, you're gonna have a component known as a cloud gateway. I'm simply going to abbreviate that CG for Cloud Gateway, and this is going to be a Veeam component that will accept the inbound traffic from the internet, and that's going to be the ingress point into the provider's data center. Now, in the context of Cloud Connect Backup, once that data has arrived, the data is simply going to be written to a subfolder on that particular service provider's repository. Now this is going to be disk-based storage initially, but then depending on the provider, they do have the option to offer tape out as a service. Now all these backups will be separated, like I mentioned, in a subfolder. So when they have more than one tenant, each tenant will have their own subfolder on this repository. Now, additionally, like I mentioned, they do have the option to do tape as a service. That's an additional cost. It would be an additional option that could be of value to you as a Veeam customer. Now, you do have the ability to encrypt your backup source side, and some providers even have the added option of forcing encryption before they will accept inbound backups just for a security perspective. Now, what if you're using WAN acceleration? This is another feature that Veeam offers. And on the provider side, it can be an optional component that you can turn on. It would come with an associated cost. Now, in this case, from a data flow standpoint, the data will still come in via the cloud gateway, but there'll be a new component inserted here, and we'll call it the WA for WAN accelerator. And the whole idea of the WAN accelerator is to try to locate any duplicate blocks of data that may already live at the provider side in their WAN accelerator cache pool. And if there's any duplicates, such as common OS blocks, that will relay the signal back to your location as the customer, and you simply won't have to transmit those duplicate blocks of data. So when you look at this, this can be quite a time saver depending on what type of backup data you're sending up to the cloud and over to the provider side. And if they do enable this on their side, you only have to be on enterprise licensing, not enterprise plus, like you would have to be if you're using the WAN accelerators anywhere else. So the VCSP community with Cloud Connect offers an advantage of WAN acceleration only needing to be on enterprise licensing. 
Now, when you look at Dataflow, that's it. It's a very simple protocol. You're going to leave the repository here, single SSL connection up to the cloud. The cloud is going to go over to the cloud gateway. So the traffic is flowing from your site to the internet, arriving at the cloud gateway, and then being channeled to a disk-based repository inside that provider's data center with or without WAN accelerators being in place, okay? Same thing over here. If you're using WAN acceleration, you will also introduce an additional component. We'll just put that here for WA, WAN accelerator on your side that will do the very same thing. So it's looking at digests on the source side, target side is looking at actual blocks of data to locate duplicates. And that's the way the WAN accelerator concept works within Veeam. We're trying to eliminate transferring duplicate data blocks over the WAN. Now, the whole argument behind what this provides Veeam customers, I would like to call this backup storage as a service. Now, many people may call this backup as a service, but generally speaking, backup as a service means the provider has some level of management and control over job schedules, retention policies, and so forth. To get started with Cloud Connect Backup, the provider simply can carve you up a quota on their repository. Let's say you need 20 terabytes. They carve up 20 terabytes. Once you make that connection of, over the single port and establish that, you're simply going to see another repository with whatever name they give it on their end and your overall capacity. That's it. From that point on, the management lies over here with you as the customer with regards to what you send to the cloud, what retention you put in the cloud, are those backups encrypted or not? So that's going to fall entirely on your shoulders. Now, there are options depending on the provider where you can elevate your level of service, where they will have more of a managerial presence in your infrastructure. But to get started initially, it's simply backup storage as a service. Now, when you contrast that to Cloud Connect replication, so let's put CCB, which is what we just covered, and then CCR for Cloud Connect replication. The story changes. So if we're going to call Cloud Connect backup, backup storage as a service, or perhaps backup as a service, Cloud Connect replication is absolutely DR as a service. Now, let's take a step back and remind you exactly what, what replication means to Veeam, right? Because there's several different definitions of replication. When we look at replication, we're talking about taking this VM over here on your side and creating a fully functioning copy over here at a target side. Now, whether that's in a VCSP data center or your own DR site, it doesn't matter at this point when we talk about regular replication within Veeam. The argument is we're not replicating your backups from repository A to repository B. We're actually making fully functioning copies ready to go. If this whole data center were to go down or offline, you can run business in this data center. That's what Veeam replication does. Now, when you look at Cloud Connect replication, this offers a nice advantage over the typical replication to your DR site in the form of you don't have to manage the infrastructure. You simply pay for the compute resources that you need and the provider will create what's called a hardware plan, which will scope out exactly what you demand from a compute standpoint as well as storage. And then that is presented to you as the customer as a cloud host target. So when you're going through building a replication job, after you've set this up on the provider side, when you get to the target, you're no longer actually browsing your own topology. You're simply connecting to what they've already established for you. So from a management standpoint, that's entirely on the VCSP to make sure that that platform is operational and online. And on your side, you simply worry about scheduling the replication jobs based on the frequency that you would like those replicas updated, right? So RPO, recovery point objectives, how much data loss could you afford should you have to fail over to the secondary location? Now, a little bit more technical, just quickly, the way the provider side handles this, they are using VLANs on their side to ensure that no customer traffic data overlaps the next customer or tenant. Now, these VLANs are non-routed VLANs, meaning 
they're configured on the vSwitches, so the distributed virtual switches in a vSphere environment. And the way that this works is they're not configured anywhere else outside of the DVS. They're simply plugged in. You don't have to make any changes on the physical hardware. And this is the way that the provider keeps everything compartmentalized within their data center. Now, when they first set this up, they will provide a pool of VLANs based on your demand as a customer, how many networks you have, how many public facing static IPs you have, they will configure that on their end. Now, the one other variable behind this from a Veeam component standpoint is known as the NEA. Now, the NEA stands for Network Extension Appliance. And for lack of a better description, it's a virtual router slash firewall. The way that this operates is with a customer that just has a single network, you'll have a single NEA on your side, and you will have a matching NEA on the provider side. Now, for every additional routable network on your side, meaning the network actually has a functioning gateway, you will increase the number of NEAs you deploy source side. So if you have four networks that actually have a gateway, you'll have four NEAs source side. While at the provider side, the NEA count will never increase. It's one NEA per tenant. Now, the way that these NEAs operate is when it's time to do a full site failover. Let's say this particular data center is offline or has suffered a catastrophe, natural disaster, what have you. When you do a failover, this NEA handles the routing internally within that provider's data center based on the way you've pre-configured it. So if you do have the static IP need that I mentioned earlier for something like a web server or an email server, that NEA already knows the routes and the rules because you've set that up ahead of time. So when the failover occurs, this NEA now becomes your own personal router based on the way that you've pre-designed it. When you look at the partial site failover, so to me, this is a huge advantage with Cloud Connect replication because when you look at DR as a service, so we have full and partial failover. With full failover, this is assuming the entire production data center is either offline, has suffered a major outage, and you need to failover everything that you've replicated ahead of time so that your business can continue within the provider's data center. With that, there is a self-service portal that you can access as a customer so that you can trigger a predefined failover plan or multiple failover plans that you've built ahead of time so you control the order at which the VMs come online and that will be accessible to you via the public internet. The partial is a little bit different. The partial site failover assumes that part of your production infrastructure is still online and running perfectly fine, but for whatever reason, you need to failover a subset. Now, potential use cases here could be you don't have the luxury of having a ton of extra resources and you need to do some hardware upgrades, refreshes. You need to take a cluster offline for management, you know, and patching or what have you. You can shut down that subset of the environment, initiate the partial site failover to those particular VMs that you've already replicated to the provider side. And what happens, the NEAs will build a layer two LAN extension. So the NEA will go out and this is using OpenVPN, it will create a connection from the source side NEA across the internet to the target side NEA. Now this creates transparent networking for you as a customer. So if you were hitting that web server on 10.0.0.10, it's still going to be accessible via that very same IP at the target side. Same thing goes with regards to DNS. So the resolution will be transparent to you as a customer because of that layer two extension. Now the NEAs are an optional component. Most of the service providers who don't already use VMware vCloud Director will opt to leverage the NEAs. Now we do support vCloud Director, so we'll label that as VCD for short. So if the service provider is using vCloud Director for management, the NEAs likely won't be needed because they'll be managing networking already using NSX or some other capability that they're familiar with. 
So the NEA is an optional component to help get started with building that layer two extension. So just to regroup on everything we've covered, because this is certainly a very busy light board because there's a lot of things going on with Cloud Connect. We've got two flavors of Cloud Connect. You've got Cloud Connect Backup and Cloud Connect Replication. Backup enables our Veeam customers to take backups from on-site repositories using a single SSL connection with a single port number going through the internet with no VPN tunnels required, no MPLS networks needed, and then establish a connection with one of our VCSP provider partners and land those backups onto their disk-based storage with the option of doing tape out. So it's a very great option if you already have a relationship with a Veeam cloud and service provider partner, or if you're looking to set up an active account with one of our VCSPs. One of the key advantages that we need to remember with Cloud Connect replication, which is the secondary option, is when you look at replicating to a location that you do not own, there's a certain level of permission and access that you have to have to do host-based replication because we're talking to the hypervisor via APIs, we're doing snapshot calls, we're writing data onto data stores as native files like VMDKs or VHDs, VHDXs. So in order to replicate to a cloud-based environment, currently the Veeam Cloud and Service Provider community are the only cloud-based targets that you can truly replicate to using Veeam that provides two different options for failing over. So that offers a key advantage if you're already looking at doing backups to the cloud, but you could see yourself also needing DR as a service. The VCSP can provide both of those with a single partnership. So they can offer you DR as a service compute and storage resources, as well as backup storage as a service or Cloud Connect backup simply using whatever on-site disk-based storage they have, an extra level of data protection using tape as a service and tape out. So that concludes the tutorial around what Cloud Connect provides you as a customer. So let's take a look inside the actual console at where these two features are configured. Thank you so much for watching.